Welcome back guys, doing a little project here, going to go over it a little bit. I'm not sure if I've posted anything about using these uh, uh, NeoPixels and my custom wires and sleeving them with some paracord. Um, but I need a driver for NeoPixels, which is, um, I mean in this case I'm just using a little Nano, an Arduino Nano. And uh, hopefully I'm not being too shaky here with my handheld uh, tripod, might be a little bit, but on this board I figured if I was going to do this and put this in a computer, I might as well um, use it to drive some fans. Now, they run at 12 volt, and to have speed control, the best way to do is uh, PWM them. Now, just above my finger, there's a little chip here with a white, white dot on it that I used to mark the top. Um, that's a ULN 2003, and what that is, that's a... Uh, for... Uh, what would you call that? Um, a Darlington array, a set of Darlington transistors, and that switches things on the ground side. Um, but uh, quite commonly used in those small 5 volt stepper motors, or whatever. But it's it's easily good to 12 volts. So I have that hooked to PWM on pin three. Um, just using the uh, analog write in an Arduino is all you'd need to do. And what I did is I bridged three output pins and three input pins so uh, one channel it's a seven channel chip one channel is good to about 500 milliamps so I bridged three just to be approximately of one and a half amps to be able to run like three fans and I put three little uh, sets of headers now these are just raw pins they're not um, actual fan headers I mean I ordered some a little while ago but I mean it might be next year before they arrive because they're coming by boat from China right uh, anyhow um, I also, I don't know if, uh, yeah I did, I think I did put the video up for that. The LEDs in these Roswell fans I had, had a habit of one or two of them dying in a corner. So I pulled the LEDs out of them, there's just a little plastic tab you pull out, and pulled the LEDs out and clipped them. And what I did is around the outside edges, I uh, hot glued in some NeoPixels. And wired them up using some old uh, IDE ribbon cable and then made a link so I can daisy chain the fans but two fans is eight NeoPixels which is approximately well it is the exact same as one of these boards and uh, so what I did is I made a little bit of custom software using uh, processing well this is probably not going to white balance yeah no it's not maybe it will if I get close enough anyhow use some processing and Arduino and I'm using the fast LED library in Arduino um, and I'll post this up somewhere, but I edited the uh, sample to use basic um, serial commands uh, like G-code um, to control the lights. Then I used processing to make a, a GUI. And if you use the GP4 add-on for processing, you can make uh, you can make uh, interfaces. Um, UIs that e really kind of easily. Um, hopefully I'm not bouncing you guys all over the place but it looks like I am. But uh, running now I'm, I've already compiled this to a, a, a standalone executable. So this is the little app that would control the LEDs and the fans and I'm just going to connect. Okay I'm going to start up the LEDs. I think it started. Maybe it didn't. There we go. Yeah, that started. Okay. So that starts up the LEDs. It also starts up the fans at a default speed of 100. And that's from 0 to 255. So I can up the fan speed to maximum here. Just one click on the screen. I don't know if you can hear them but they are slowly going to max and the four LEDs inside are um, running through I think the default showcase that it first boots into boots into like a, a showcase mode not a specific palette so it runs through the different all the different palettes and the different um, uh, linear or pulsed lighting modes that that comes in the fast LED library all I did was add a couple extra palettes that are specific to me which is specifically a red and blue one at the end which matches my case theme so that's all being 
driven by this Arduino. And you can see I have an old style uh, drive connector which goes over to my bench supply. The top supply is pro providing the 5 volts for the uh, LEDs and the bottom one is providing 12 volts, 0.3 amps for the fans. And those fans are currently running at uh, almost full. Is it 253? No, technically they're full, but I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. But um, anyhow, yeah, there's four LEDs in the corner of those fans, and this this strip of LEDs was replaced by these fans. I just took those eight off and put the fans in, but that's a strip running over there, and that's using the same. They're, they're connected right now. I know it's kind of hard to show because I got it on the other side. Um, but uh, the PWM control for that is linked to a slider here. Let's see if that's going to balance down. So I'm going to put them to about half power here. Okay, so let's move that down here, maybe 82. Now you can't really see much of a difference on camera for that. I can tell you I could feel the difference. <laughs> less airflow and it's quieter uh, maybe you guys aren't picking that up because of the fan from my bench my power supply my bench supply if you've seen the other video is basically a chopped down computer case with a PC power supply in the back and some 40 volt step ups to those uh, front panel controls so um, I can go anywhere I think from 32 volts down to their lowest settings but uh, because of that there's a PC fan at the back of this case running that you can always hear because it runs full full speed um, so you'll, you won't hear those over that. Um, at lower speeds, like if I bring this down to um, 15, so the fans, you might see some blade pattern now. Maybe not, I don't know, it depends on the fresh rate of this camera. Um, at the lower PWM levels, like uh, 10, no, no, that's too low, at 10, um, the higher amperage fan Let's see, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. This one will make whining sounds. Um, but they both spin, and that's at uh, point, that's at uh, 10 out of 255. And if we look over here on the uh, the meter, which is hooked up, that's has an effect of 5.6 volts. And to do that, and get them to run smoothly, even at the lower uh, values. I had to put a, a 250 uh, uh, puff electrolytic on the output. It has to be on the output of the PWM. And that smooths the power out. And the fans seem to like that. And when you change the speed, what I do is I do a quarter second pulse at full power, at full power, and then to whatever the speed is. So that way it gets over any inertia. Because if you start a still, a stopped fan, they, they normally wouldn't start. Um, and then on the input side, I have a small, I can't remember the value of that one, but that removes noise back from the system because the Darlington Array, the ULN 2003, created noise back in the system be, uh, in current pulses that was actually messing up the LEDs and creating audio. But just to show you that uh, pulse, I'm going to drop the speed to nothing. So, whoop, <laughs> they tilted back a little bit there. Um... So they're going to come to a stop. Now if I give them a speed, even a little speed, back to where they were, say 12, what happens is they wouldn't normally spin up like that. So for a quarter second, I give them full speed. And then after that quarter second, obviously, they come down to the speed that they should be. And they are both two different product codes. They're two different fans. So this one takes a little bit less amps to run and has a different top speed. This one has takes more amps and can hit a higher top speed so they're, they're two different fans so they have different uh, speed patterns in the blades which is kind of actually is kind of nice and um, kind of unintentional but it's, it's just how they are but the a higher amperage fan actually makes more noise at higher speed just because it's hitting higher speed and higher RPM I guess but uh, they're both very quiet and uh, now I just have to come up with a nice little box to put this in because this is just the prototype and uh, get that set up to plug into my case. It's going to take power off the end of the uh, 
the modular uh, plug in there has some Molex uh, module and at the very end of it there's one drive old style drive connector like this for the small drives the old floppy style connector um, so yeah that's it running um, I can change the speed of the LEDs and I can put them on a say for example just red and blue palette that would be what would be matching my case case theme and I can slow that right down so what I've done is slowed the transition time for the LED color changes and that's all adjustable from the processing app and I will uh, clean up that app and possibly add the ability to make uh, custom pallets at runtime because it just requires just requires 16 integers that are containing the RGB colors so I might figure that out but as it is right now it controls the LEDs uh, the LED pattern for all the LEDs whether it's these these strips or whether it's in the fans uh, using a, a G code like uh, command set and it does the same for the fan speeds but uh, anyhow, I'll get in more into that later. This has gone on a little bit longer than I intended to do. But uh, anyhow, that's the project I'm working on right now. And uh, when I get it done, I'll have uh, basic plans for this. Probably not exact plans, but the simple, uh, simplified schematic for this. And uh, make it so anybody could use it. And um, yeah, you guys should be able to control your LEDs and run your fans without having to buy uh, uh, one of those external boxes. Um, I mean, they're nice if you want to get a branded one or whatever, but this means that you're not stuck with any particular brand or, or chain, and if you're used to working on these kind of projects, this can be quite fun, and uh, you can put some RGB goodness in your computer, because we all know RGB lighting makes your computer run faster, right? Anyhow, uh, as always, if you like this kind of thought thing, uh, remember to thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.